This month on Connections. Our travels around Chicagoland begin on the south side, at one of many spots where people can work out along the lakefront, our first stop. Then we'll head west on the number 55 Garfield bus to check out the CTA's new Optima buses, specially designed to navigate narrow streets like those in the Hyde Park area. We'll board the red line at Garfield Station and travel north as we talk about the newly commissioned works of art that will be installed at various stations along the red and brown lines as part of the CTA's Arts in Transit program. As we step off the red line at Chicago Avenue, we'll introduce you to the winning crew that helps keep CTA trains in top running condition. Then we'll board the number 66 Chicago bus and travel west to our destination, the area between Damon and Western, where old world charm coexists with a new wave of artists and shopkeepers. We'll connect to the O'Hare branch of the Blue Line and tell you about the improvements the CTA is making to the line signal system. Then we'll board the number 20 Madison bus for a story about a pilot satellite tracking program designed to enhance travel. Finally, at Michigan Avenue, we'll transfer to the number 151 bus and head north to check out a brand new museum located underneath the Michigan Avenue bridge. There's lots to see and do in Chicago this summer, and what better way than on board the CTA? Hi, I'm Dale Rivera. Welcome to Connections, where you can learn all about using the CTA in and around Chicago. How about taking the CTA not just to work, but to work out? There's no better place to get fit than along the lakefront. It's our first stop. Working on getting into shape or trying to shed a few pounds? Then head over to Chicago's lakefront. Whether you're training for a marathon or taking your first steps toward fitness, Chicago's Lakefront has something for everyone. The Chicago Park District wants to make sure people enjoy themselves while they're exercising, keeping active, and just keeping a healthy lifestyle. The Lakefront is such a beautiful place to do your activity, you can enjoy it, it doesn't even feel like exercise. If you like to walk, run, bike, or rollerblade, there are 24 miles of lakefront paths for you to explore all the way from Calumet Beach on the south side to Juneway Terrace Beach on the north. And rain or shine, you can count on people of all ages to be at the lakefront getting fit. And I've been walking for a month now for about half an hour, 45 minutes every day, just to try to get our health stronger and our stomachs lower. A lot of fitness activities begin at Chicago's North Avenue Beach. Here is where you'll find bike rentals, those built for one or a cart that holds four. It's also one of the places where you can rent volleyball equipment. But if you really want to pump iron, check out the Bally Total Fitness Center right at the beach. Anything from spinning classes to lifting weights to cardiovascular activity, you can do that all at the Bally Total Fitness Center on the lakefront. South of North Avenue at Ohio Street Beach, you'll also find some serious swimming going on, as this is the spot where many people training for triathlons do their laps. Up and down the lakefront there are tennis courts, athletic fields, driving ranges, and three golf courses. People from out of town are always shocked when they see this golf course here in the middle of the city like this. Of course, if you like extreme sports, there are skateboard parks on both the south and north sides. If you're looking for fitness off the beaten path, try out the park course that starts near Belmont Avenue. Laid out along the bike path, the course features a series of strength building and cardiovascular exercises that will help you get stretched, strong, and balanced. No matter what you like when it comes to fitness, the lakefront has all kinds of activities. And you can even make the CTA part of your fitness plan. What you can do is take the CTA bus here, get off, go for maybe a one to two block walk, sit, enjoy the environment, Walk back to the bus and take the bus home. That could be your first active move. And remember, you can always bring your bike on CTA buses and on CTA trains except during weekday rush periods. So head to Chicago's lakefront for some summertime fitness and let your journey begin on the CTA. 
We're boarding the number 55 Garfield bus heading west to Hyde Park, where the CTA is operating a new style of bus designed to navigate the area's narrow streets. It's just one more way the CTA is helping to make your travel smoother and more reliable. Looking down a Hyde Park street, you might soon spot a new type of bus heading your way. At 30 feet long and 99 inches wide, the Optima buses are petite compared to the normal 40-foot CTA bus. So they're a perfect fit for narrow streets, such as those in Hyde Park. When you're going down neighborhood streets, it's narrow and the curves are tight. And so you want a shorter bus and an narrow bus. And this provides both of those attributes. The Optima buses will be used on several routes throughout the neighborhood, including five University of Chicago bus routes. The 170, 171, 172, 173, and the 192. The new buses will replace the old PACE buses that the CTA placed in service on those routes in 2005 while waiting for the Optimas. We think the addition of the new 30-foot buses will add additional reliability to uh, the service we provide here. Despite their compact size, the Optima buses are equipped with all the modern amenities you'd find on other new CTA buses. Security cameras, wheelchair ramps, and lower floors, bike racks, strap hangers, touch doors, a voice annunciation system, and air conditioning. However, there is a new feature customers will enjoy as soon as they sit down. These seats are wider, they're lighter, they're thinner, so that the, the net result is they're much more comfortable for our customers. And in addition, they provide a lot more knee room. Passenger counters have also been installed on the Optimus, so the CTA can keep track of the number of customers that get on or off a bus anywhere along the route at any time of day. And this is very useful to our scheduling department in designing uh, the routes and the service so that we provide ample capacity and that we know uh, at any given time you know, how many vehicles we need in order to provide the service. As with all new CTA buses, the Optimas have low emission engines and a little something over their counterparts. These are very quiet buses. They're much quieter than any other buses that we own. So, so uh, that, that'll also be an attraction for uh, the neighborhoods in which we operate. Optima buses will be rolled out in other similar neighborhoods later this year. Meanwhile, keep an eye out for an Optima bus on the streets of Hyde Park. Step on board and enjoy your journey on the CTA. We're about to board the Red Line, where CTA customers will soon be enjoying some colorful changes at various Red Line stations along the Dan Ryan, as well as some Brown Line stops. The CTA's Arts and Transit program is right on track. Public art beautifies and personalizes Chicago's landscape. Whether it's Millennium Park's Cloud Gate, Daly Plaza's Picasso, or one of the nearly 1,000 other works around the city. And while you may expect to find public art in parks and on city streets, it can also be seen on the CTA. As part of the rehabilitation of the 54th Cermak branch, eight stations were renovated, and original artwork was commissioned for each station. The artists and artwork were selected by a panel of representatives from the community, the city's Department of Cultural Affairs, and the CTA. The success of that project led the city and the CTA to establish an ongoing partnership. The Arts in Transit program is now a part of the rehabilitation project on the Dan Ryan branch of the Red Line and the capacity expansion project on the Brown Line. Artists and artwork have been selected for all seven renovated stations along the Red Line and the first five of the 18 stations included in the Brown Line project. Well, when we're selecting artists, um, we want to see first that they have an interesting aesthetic look, but then also whether it's through a gallery or public art background, the artist has the ability to do something as large scale as a permanent public art installation for a CTA station. Seven red line stations from 35th Street to 87th Street will receive original artwork. Artists had to take into consideration the unique architecture of the stations, as well as their location within the neighborhoods along the Dan Ryan Expressway. They're very modern looking, there's a lot of window space, and there doesn't initially seem to be a lot of space for artwork. So for the Dan Ryan Red Line, you're going to be seeing a lot of art glass um, that's getting installed to play with the light, as well as some suspended work over the stairways. 
artist Joe Hormuth created the artwork for the 47th Street Station, which involves installing laser-cut acrylic panels in different colors beneath the station's skylights. My initial um, concept actually came from looking up in the early spring at the boughs of trees and the filtered light through the leaves. Then I began to think more in a floral way and I started sort of doodling and I realized that doodles were the perfect thing. Joe believes natural light through colored acrylic will give the effect of stained glass windows. It's going to change throughout the day, throughout the seasons, uh, depending on where the light is and what, what the light is like. It's really something that will unfold as you walk down the platform and uh, trying to get that across uh, was difficult. So I'm really anxious to see it. <laughs> As part of the Brown Lines rehabilitation, public art installations are slated for the first five stations under construction. Western, Rockwell, Francisco, Kedzie, and Kimball. Artists and artwork will be selected for the other 13 stations as the project progresses. The project selected for Kimball Station will reinforce the multiculturalism of the surrounding neighborhood. And the artwork is these two sculptures that are representative of a lotus flower, which specifically comes from the history of Cambodia, but was also chosen because of the international and universal symbol of the flower. The metal sculptures are being made by artist Josh Garber. His personal connection to the Brown Line dates to the opening of his studio 15 years ago, next to the l -Track. But it was Josh's research on the Kimball neighborhood which influenced his design. I found out that there's 128 different nationalities, there's a, a lot of refugees, and I spoke to a few of the community members and they said it's very important that we have something that gives us hope. Reflecting his findings, the names for the two identical sculptures will be Hope and Renewal. And while the pieces will be eye-catching outside the station entrance, they also have a practical side. It also creates a kind of private area for seating so that people could either interact with each other sitting on the two pedals or they could just be in their own space. The artwork selected as part of the first phase of the program at the Red and Brown stations is expected to be installed by next spring. And the hope is that the projects will provide customers with a unique experience as they step on board the CTA. We want each station to kind of have its own identity with each new piece of artwork so that to create a destination spot as well as a way to move down the line and really experience something different at each station. Riding the rails, you might not think about the effort that goes into maintaining the CTA's rail system. There are dedicated workers, including one prize-winning team, who make it their business to provide safe and smooth travel for CTA customers on the move. At the CTA Skokie Shops, you don't have to look far to find out what Darnell Stovall, Terry Sotil, and Elmer Costabile have been up to. The banner says it all. They're the 2005 winners of the rail maintenance competition at the CTA's annual rodeo. On the job, Elmer and Darnell maintain the electrical components of the CTA's rail cars, while Terry is focused on the car's mechanics. Three years ago, Elmer and Darnell invited Terry to join their rodeo team. Both good guys to work with. Well, they've placed before and they asked me to join their team, so I thought that was an honor. The threesome is definitely onto something. Since they came together, they've won the rodeo competition twice. We kind of do it for fun. If we win, good. But, you know, we work for it. So when we win, it's a pleasant surprise. During the rodeo event, rail maintenance teams are tested in eight categories, including a written exam. In 2005, there were 16 rail maintenance teams in the competition, each consisting of three members. We put teams together, so we're one stronger, one's a little bit weaker. The stronger one can carry the weaker one. When the tables turn and the, the competition changes to a different level, then that weaker guy is going to be able to support the, the uh, stronger guy based on their job knowledge and skill levels. Terry, Elmer, and Darnell always prepare for the competition by studying and sharpening their skills. But each year, they're still taken by surprise. A lot of the problems are just general mechanical or to throw a little 
uh, twists or what have you in there that should just automatically pick up if you're observing. Still, the best way for these guys to make it through the competition is by working together as a team. We know each other's strengths and weaknesses. And, uh, you know, when Terry's in a mechanical event, uh, Elmer and I, we try to support him as much as we can so he can feel that the team is all together. And it's paid off. Darnell, Terry, and Elmer's team, along with customer assistant Robert Kempfe and rail operator Mike Sheehan, went on to take third place in the American Public Transit Association's International Rail Transit Competition, which was held last June in New York. Working together, as they do every day at the CTA, they showed why they are such an important part of the CTA's operations, helping to keep the CTA's nearly 1,200 rail cars running on time, clean, safe, and friendly. So the next time you're on board, remember the dedicated people like Elmer, Darnell, and Terry, who are working hard to make sure your journey on the CTA is a good one. The number 66 Chicago Avenue bus takes you from the magnificent mile to some really unique places, such as those between Damon and Western Avenues where old world charm coexists with things a little more offbeat. And it's our destination. Heading west on the number 66 Chicago Avenue bus, you'll find Ukrainian Village, a neighborhood where old traditions live on and new trends are popping up, making Yuki Village one of the city's most interesting and upcoming areas. Take the number 66 to Damon, and that's where you'll find Roto Fuji, a shop that could best be described as a toy store for grown-ups who are still young at heart. Roto Fuji is a designer toy store and gallery. We sell uh, toys created by artists. While these plastic and vinyl toys are fun to look at, they aren't necessarily things you play with. The store mostly attracts young adults who collect the toys as artwork. On the weekends, it's not unusual for us to have people from five states and two countries come through the store, so it's really awesome. I used to buy all my vinyl toys and all my specialty stuff online, and it's so cool having something like this in Chicago. Roto Fuji's toys range from desktop figures to full-size models, and they can cost anywhere from a few dollars to a few hundred dollars. Some of the most popular toys are little ones that come in a blind box. You're buying a box, but you don't know specifically which figure's in it, so there's kind of a mystery element to it, and there's what they call chase figures or mystery figures that aren't even shown on the package and sometimes are usually more rare. In addition to selling toys, the store serves as a gallery for local artists. So stop by and check out the unique toys and art at Roto Fuji. If you venture farther down Chicago Avenue on the number 66, you can't miss Kasha's Deli. It's been in the neighborhood for nearly 25 years. Seven days a week, customers flock to Kasha's for homemade cooking with Polish flair, and everyone has their favorites. The pierogies, they got good salads. The finger potatoes are good. Uh, the pork, breaded pork, veal, chicken, you name it. The tale of Kasha's Deli is truly an immigrant success story. Kasia Bober left Poland for the United States in search of a better life. After years of odd jobs and financial hardships, Kasia decided to open this deli simply because she was a good cook. It's a family business. I have uh, one grandson and two granddaughters work for me, and my daughter and my son. Kasia quickly became famous for her pierogies, which are available in 11 different flavors. They are now sold at Jewel and Dominic's and in 13 states. Her pierogies have been voted as the best in Chicago four times, but it's the compliments from customers that Kasha cherishes. Somebody said, I love your pierogi, they are the best I always buy in Jewel store. It was nice. Continuing west on Chicago Avenue to Western, you're going to find the new home of Liz's Pet Shop, another longtime resident of Ukrainian Village. While Liz specializes in holistic pet food for both our furry and feathered friends, it's the birds that have driven her passion for the past 25 years. Hello. But this isn't your average bird store. Here, birds are raised by Liz from the time they're chicks, and she won't let just anyone take one of her birds home. It's a matchmaking thing. 
and I love it. You would have to come in, spend time with it. I'd have to find out if you had an apartment or a house. Liz buys her birds from special breeders, and all of them are checked out by an avian veterinarian before they're sold. Liz also takes great care in making sure that her birds feel loved. Now this is an African Grey. This is a Congo, six months old. It'll be going home very soon. But the people are coming in at least once a week. They do bond with this baby, okay? And I mean, usually greys aren't this affectionate, but see, we've worked hard with it. In addition to bonding, buying a bird, and picking up food, at Liz's you can also buy bird clothes. This is for the bigger parrots. Now this is for the summer attire, okay? And then we have for after five. <laughs> you can take your bird out with you. So step off the number 66 Chicago Avenue bus in Ukrainian Village, where you'll find hip toys, ethnic cuisine, or a place to mingle with some feathered friends. We're heading south on the blue line, where the entire train control system is being updated to help provide customers with smoother, faster, and more reliable service which is what the CTA is all about and strives to provide each time customers step on board. Service along the Blue Line from Forest Park Station to Jefferson Park Station is getting a major boost. The CTA is upgrading the train control system and the power supply along a 20-mile stretch of track. The current system has been in place for more than 40 years, and upgrades will help to improve the reliability of service for Blue Line customers. Three different branches of the Blue Line operate through the Dearborn subway during weekday rush hours, so efficient traffic management is critical to providing smooth rail service. The train control system helps to ensure the safe operation and movement of trains. They also allow operators to maintain the appropriate speed and distance between trains in the Dearborn subway, as well as along the Forest Park and O'Hare branches of the Blue Line. The project also provides new train control and power supply systems for the connection of the Red and Blue Line subway tunnels in preparation for the new rail station planned for 108 North State Street. The old system was cutting edge when first installed several decades ago and has essentially served as a traffic signal system for subway trains. It's remarkable that it's, that it's lasted and served us well for 55 years, but the time has come to replace it with something state of the art. So what we're doing is we're removing the old automatic clock signal lights, which you can see when you stand on the platform, and replacing them with a state of the art cab signal system, which is what we have throughout the rest of our railroad. The improved technology featured in the new system includes built-in safeguards and more detailed information displayed directly in the cab for the operator. The operator actually gets an electronic indication and has a control panel in the train cab that tells him when he can uh, go faster, slow down, and, and even if he doesn't um, slow down in the time he's supposed to, the train will stop automatically for him. Another aspect to the Blue Line project is that the traction power cables that deliver the power to trains are also being replaced in the state and Dearborn subways. A person who purchases an old house may want to improve their electrical service. It's the same thing here. It's time that we replace the traction power cable to provide for better service, especially in light of the fact that we're operating newer, heavier trains. The system upgrade will also help reduce the CTA's operating costs replacing old, maintenance-intensive equipment with new, state-of-the-art electronics. Much of the Blue Line's signal and track work is being done at night and on the weekends to minimize disruption. The project is expected to be completed in 2009, and while many of the upgrades won't be visible to customers, the reliability of Blue Line service will improve, as the CTA will be able to improve the efficiency with which trains are navigated through the system. Most customers won't notice a lot of difference in, in what they see every day, but they will notice a huge difference in the performance of the railroad. We're about to board the number 20 Madison bus, which is part of an exciting new program testing satellite technology that would allow customers to track bus arrival times on the internet. All you'll need, 
It's a little basic training. The latest satellite technology could make stepping on board a CTA bus even easier. With the Bus Tracker Pilot, the CTA is testing a new, high-tech system that tracks the progress of the buses on the number 20 Madison route. Customers are able to log on to the CTA's website and see the estimated arrival time of the next two buses on the route at any given stop. Using Global Positioning Satellites, or GPS, the CTA is able to determine the exact location of a number 20 bus and estimate its arrival time at stops along the route. Our operations personnel, both in the control center and a field supervisor in his or her vehicle, will actually be able to see where the buses are on a map, and so it's a better way for us to be able to manage service and improve our reliability on the route. The GPS system on board the bus relays status updates to the CTA's control center every 15 seconds. In turn, a monitor inside the bus then allows operators to receive route information from the control center. While being able to monitor bus movements improves CTA service, it also helps customers in other ways. By logging on to www.ctabustracker.com on any device with internet access, customers on the number 20 Madison route can see on a map and on a grid when a 20 bus is expected at a specific Madison Street bus stop. If you're at work and you're getting ready to um, go home, you can check it before you turn off your computer and see, oh, the bus is going to be coming, it's predicted to arrive in five minutes. That might give you enough time to get down to your bus stop and make that bus. In addition to monitoring bus progress, customers can set an alarm or pop-up on the website to notify them when a bus reaches a certain stop on the route. If you are at, for example, Madison and Halsten, and you set that alarm at um, Ogilvy Station, then that will give you enough time, perhaps, to get out to the bus stop. Even without internet access, you can find out when the next bus is coming right at the stop. As part of the pilot, a message sign has been mounted on the westbound bus shelter at Madison at Jefferson. It tells customers when the next two buses are expected to arrive. This is great. I love it. The CTA's bus tracker pilot will run until the end of the year. During this time, the CTA will be collecting and evaluating feedback from customers and evaluating the performance of the technology. One of the best ways to view the Chicago River is from the Michigan Avenue Bridge. But if you want to see it from a vantage point few people have ever seen, let the CTA take you to one of the city's newest attractions. The McCormick Tribune Bridge House and Chicago River Museum, our last stop. You can now learn more about the Chicago River and get a bird's eye view of its daily activity, all from a bridge house tower. The McCormick Tribune Bridge House and Chicago River Museum sits just below the Michigan Avenue Bridge, inside its southwestern tower. While the museum chronicles the history of the Chicago River from its early days as a muddy prairie stream to how it became an integral part of Chicago's expansion, it also gives visitors a unique perspective of the city. Not only are you looking out on this vista and seeing the Trump Tower go up and the Wrigley Building and the Tribune Building, you see this working city, but you learn that there are 70 species of fish right now in the Chicago River. You learn about the restoration projects that are taking place along the north and the south branches. You get to really see that this river is multifaceted and there's a lot of things going on. Inside the museum, you can also see the inner workings of the bridges themselves, the giant cogs and gears that raise and lower more than 4,000 tons of steel so boats can pass through. We'll tell you more about the Bridge House Museum next month as we begin another journey around Chicagoland on the CTA. I'm Dale Rivera. See you in September on Connections. For more information about the CTA or to use the RTA's trip planner, visit our website at www.transitchicago.com or for customer service matters, call 1-888-YOUR-CTA. For travel information, call the RTA at 836-7000 from anywhere in the Chicago area. <laughs>